deep one. There's probably one under the seat in front of you. And of course, the New King James is your, the right Bible to read. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the NIV later. <laughs> and uh, as we, whatever translation you read is the best translation. So uh, there are so many different Bibles. Uh, and they spent a lot of time making sure that the thoughts and the words held to the message uh, that was from the Hebrew Bible and uh, any other writings, and they took great uh, pain and sacrifice, and he gave their lives for uh, to get this message to us that is real for today, and it works in our lives. And uh, that's what I really would like to stress is that you need to be in love with the Word of God. The Bible should be important. B I B L E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. You need to have your, your life surrendered to the living God, and you need to know that you, to the best of your abilities, you've lived and practiced what's written in this book. Now, when I share these messages, I'm not saying I got it all together and that I, I'm, boy, I, just because I'm standing up here, I've done everything right. I am working out my salvation just as much as you are. I have the great opportunity of standing up here and sharing my thoughts and my heart with you. And uh, so I desire to, uh, to represent the Lord, to be an ambassador. It says when we're born again, we become not only uh, a new creation, but we become ambassadors for the Lord. And I was thinking, I was listening to Dave, what a voice. Doesn't he have a nice voice? Yeah, yes. If I had his voice, his hair, there's nothing I can't do. <laughs> I think I tried a wig one time and it just kept sliding around. <laughs> we had some visitors that came up last week. Uh, uh, they called us up and they said they were going to be over in Crystal Falls. Can we stop over? And I said, yes. Um, and I filled them in where we were at. Uh, and then I said, we're uh, searching the scriptures and uh, going through the first epistle of John. Uh, and so uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and read in advance. And uh, they did. I knew they would. Now I'm telling you the same thing. Just because we're in chapter 2, the epistle of 1 John doesn't mean you can't read all five chapters. Right? Yes. All right. And I want you to get a little excited. Remember I told you if you say amen or something like that, it really draws from that well that's in me. And it makes me uh, all the more want to just let it out. <laughs> I had a guy standing behind me at the prison with me. He said, preach it, brother. Preach it! I said, keep quiet, I am. <laughs> I am preaching. And uh, so they came over, they had a great time. Uh, they, they said they really enjoyed being here at the church. I was hoping Dave and Gabriel would be here so they could see some of our friends and talk to them and see if they were of sound mind. <laughs> We're in chapter 2, and we're going to pick up and, uh, verse 15. Verse 15. Now, the title of the message this morning is Love Not This World. Love Not This World. Well, you probably need to hear some thoughts on that. And uh, I'm, I, I suppose that I need to open it up so you'll understand how I view it. And maybe that could be something that you may see in the same way, or maybe you'll add some thoughts to it in your own daily life. And so it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. Uh, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. These very scripture call us to be separated or set apart 
from this world. And now we need to know how we can do that. Well, our whole study here in uh, the first epistle of John is that the Bible says you can know. You can know. I've had people over the year, years have said to me, you can't really know if you're saved. Oh, I say, yes, you can. You can know that you're saved, and you can know that you're going to heaven. And I said, there's a whole book on that knowledge of knowing and abiding. Words are important. Now, when I was younger, I didn't care much about words, but I understand they're very important. I learned different principles, and words were spoken to me, especially in the military. When they said, fall in, you better fall in, or you were in trouble. If they said, you better shine your shoes, you better get your shoes on. And there was a lot of different things that they would put before us, and they expected us to do. Life is filled with instructions. Would you agree? Yes. You drive out of here and you go down to the first stop sign. You know what it says stop? You know what they mean by that? Stop. 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 Simple as that. When you're going down the highway and you're, the, the sign says 35, what does that mean? 40. 40. <laughs> 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 I'll give her next, one of the things that she taught me a lesson on. She was, our son had a business over in Ashton, a uh, cleaning business, so she was going over there to help him. And uh, she's on her way, and all of a sudden I get a phone call. And she says, Gary, if you come to Ashland, don't speed. <laughs> I had no plans to go to Ashland. <laughs> so I say, why are you telling me this? I, I got pulled over. <laughs> I forget how fast were you going? I thought I was going about 40 miles over. Oh. <laughs> I wanted you to say it. $200. <laughs> $200. I think Greg picked up the tab for me. Later, yeah. He, yeah, he's a good son. <laughs> he wouldn't have done that for me. <laughs> then, you know, you always told me, go to speed limit. <laughs> All right. That's just one thing. You know, if it says 50, go 50. They give you a little allowance, but be careful. A little grace there, but I would stay with this premium. You'll never get that money back. <laughs> I don't care how long you work, how many jobs, or whatever. If you were paid $200, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. All right. For all that is in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So we're getting clear, a clear understanding that there is a world around us. And uh, we have to operate in this world. I am thankful for this, this world, this country, that which we live in. Uh, it has been a blessing to our lives. But our hearts are set on the heavenly kingdom. You say, well, how do you know if there's a heaven? Well, I believe there's a heaven because the Bible tells me there's a heaven. And I have, my destination is heaven. Praise God. Verse 17. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God, now listen, abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. And over in Galatians chapter 5, it says, He who practices such things will inherit the kingdom of God. But if you get outside of the, 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 the word of God, or if you decide you're going to do it a little different way, I don't think the writers were, they had an NIV, and I'm not sure if it was right. <laughs> Trust the NIV and the New King James. And if you want to get into the old King James, that, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful writing. So abides forever. If you have, if you can mark your Bible, and I would suggest that you can, uh, this, this book will stay here, but those little marks you put in there, they will mean something to you, something to you at this very time. Now, 
there's a scripture that gives us good instruction, and if you want to flip over to Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12, I've been sharing this thought with you over and over, and again, you might know it by heart, I know it by heart, but uh, here's what it says in verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, and I mean, I'm talking to all of you, brethren, when you're there, say amen. 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 All right, there's half of the church is there. <laughs> By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, just the very fact that you, you got up this morning and you started to prepare yourself to come to church, that is your reasonable service. You're coming to be with others of like mind, to worship God. Some of you can sing great. I, I'm, I'm in the back and I'm listening, and I said, boy, I'll tell you, someday I'm going to sing that. <laughs> I think I can. Janice said, no, you can't. She said, you've got to keep practicing. Number two, verse two, and do not, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. So our, our goal or our, our motivation is to be pleasing to God. Amen? Amen? We want to be pleasing to God. Now, you can come to church every Sunday and you can give in the offering and you don't know the Lord. You have to make a decision to know God by a confession from your heart, from your mouth, that you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Paul said in the Romans chapter 10, the word is near you and even in your heart and in your mouth, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart, man believes. And he is not a respecter. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise God. That's the entrance way. Jesus is the doorway. Jesus said, those who come through the door, through me, hear my voice. And so if you're hearing the voice of God, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice, for the Lord is present. And when you're born again, the Spirit of God comes in and dwells with you and renews your spirit, and the two are one. This is exciting. And this I did not know until that day and that hour where I cried out to God. I said, God, I don't understand it. But Lord, whatever it takes, I'm willing to, to do whatever you've called me to do and go wherever you've called me to go. And Christ came into my heart, and I know that I know. Before I ever read the first epistle of John, I knew, I knew that I was born again. That things change. All of a sudden your thinking changes. You can't do the things that you used to do in secret. All of a sudden there's a desire to read God's Word. I always said when I was in the military, someday I'm going to read that Bible. Someday I'm going to, you know, really get into it. Guess what? Today is a good day to get into it. Amen? Amen. Amen. You benefit when you read the Word. I'm getting ahead for in my message here. There's a blessing when you read the Word of God. And you tuck it into your heart. That you may not sin against Him who has created you. God is so good. He's so willing and so merciful. You know, there's a scripture I, was, I wanted to point out. Uh, those little nuggets, when I do my messages, all of a sudden they jump out at me, and uh, I can't say everything. Where's the clock? Oh, I have so much time. We'll be out of here by one. <laughs> uh, but Acts, I mean, when you get into, you say, I have to repent. There's some scripture, we read it last week. If you sin, just bring it to the Lord, ask for forgiveness, and He restores you instantly. 
Uh, in Acts chapter 3, verse 10, or verse 19, it says, Repent therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may, <clears throat> may come from the presence of the Lord. You know, God's in your corner. God wants to bless you, guide you, and teach you His ways. And He's giving you the Holy Spirit to help you uh, when needed. I have to get back over to Joshua. Um, <clears throat> and so as we go on, and we just said here, uh, in verse 17, uh, it says, and if you abide with Him forever. What, what John is saying here, uh, didn't God create all things for us to enjoy? Does that question ever come? Well, He created the trees. Yes, He did. And they're beautiful. He says, enjoy it. He created the, the, the things that are before us. And He says, enjoy them. And yet He says, so what part of the world and all that is in it should we not love? Love your fellow man? You know, pray for those that are in authority. I, the fellow said, well, I can't pray for them. I don't agree with them. He didn't say if you agree with them. He said, pray for them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pray that they'll repent and turn to God. And uh, that would be a good thing. Well, Paul addresses this very thought in Colossians 2.8 when he says this. Beware. Beware, lest anyone cheat you, or plunder you, or take you captive through philosophies and empty deceits, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Everything we do should measure up with the standards that are in that world. Now, you see, I can't remember the, the word like you do. It didn't say you have to worry about every time you read the Bible, you're putting more in. The word is a seed, and it's planted there. And Jesus said in the hour that you need it, it will come forth as living water. Amen? Amen. It'll come, you know, when someone says something to you, and, you, and they say, oh, well, abortion's okay. Uh, let's just go with that. No, abortion is murder. And God will deal with that. We are to pray for those that are doing things like that, that God will open their understanding and they can hear the truth and be set free. Would you agree? Yeah. And then it says in Colossians 3, 1, just write these things down. Uh, if, you, if you are, uh, I better go there drawing uh, a blank up there. It says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above. You see, you have control of your mind. Amen? Amen. You have control of your mind. Um, <clears throat> Not on things on the earth. For you died and you, your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. And therefore put to death your members, which are, and then he goes on to share these things. Now, it says over in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Be strong in the Lord, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but philosophies and uh, empty deceits and so forth of man. We fight against principalities and powers that are at work trying to deceive and, and, and take Christians and, and undermine what they believe. And we need to put on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and hold up the shield of faith when these fiery darts come. And we know that the Lord is with him, he will, and he will stand with us. Now, Jesus said, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and God, and 
to God the things that are God's. There are great blessings in living for the Lord. Would you agree? Great. I, I, for over 50 years now, I've been serving the Lord. Now, has anyone else here ever, did you ever make a commitment in a UPS truck? Janice called that UPS guy up. We've got to get it up here. I got saved in a UPS truck. I don't know where you made a commitment. It might have been just here this morning as the word, were, the word was brought forth. You might have said in your mind, Lord, save me. Lord, I want my name in the book of life. Lord, I want to know you. And he said, I'm glad you asked. And he reached down and he touched your heart. By faith you receive. And so, and then the word implies, you're in the world, but not, but we're not to be of the world. Don't let the world consume you or overtake you. Right? I mean, uh, there are so many things being thrown at you daily. How many of you have a TV? You know those people, they spend a lot of money marketing how to sell you Cheerios <laughs> or anything else. And they just bring it on the screen. And then you get into the movie. I have a TV, I must confess. And sometimes I think, Lord, forgive me. Uh, it, it, those, I think I said it here, I did. Uh, we need to think in line with God's Word. Computers are good, they can be used for good, or they can be used to mess you up. The TV's okay if you watch the right things. Uh, the phone, I'll tell you, the phone has overtaken our whole life. I've been in homes where the family's talking to one another, <laughs> and I'm thinking, just look at each other. If I would have done that when I was growing up, hold it, Dad, where's my phone? Well, we didn't have phone at that time. We sat at the table, and we kept our eyes on the food. And when we were done, we asked our father, can we be excused? Yes, you can. Some of you guys, young people, what? <laughs> Dictatorship. <laughs> I don't know, it worked out. And uh, we didn't have no TV on. We had a TV, I believe. And so there are tools, tools, you can, uh, you can control and uh, of how much time did you give to them. And uh, so I just encourage you to consider those things. They're not, they're not necessarily sinful, but they can occupy your time over the Word of God. In verse 18, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know, there's that know again, know that it is the last hour. Then uh, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Now, the point here is that to be mindful, things will go on, but they are, but are you ready for departure, the catching up away, as uh, written in Thessalonians, it says, I, no need that I tell you about the hour of his coming. You are called to be ready. Jesus says, be ready, for you don't know the day nor the hour that I'm coming. So, when he comes, what will you be doing at that time? Will you be praising him? Will you be searching the scriptures? Uh, or doing other things that maybe you knew that you should be doing the things that were profitable, and that was uh, serving him and being in his presence. Where's that? All right, I'm going to speed it up here in a minute. But I want to read uh, a portion of scripture here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But concerning the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, safety then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. 
But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should come and overtake you as a thief. You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So you are required, just like as being in the military, for the first few months that I went the first after joining, uh, you know, that commitment I had to make, make, they said, raise your right hand. Right then it was fun. And uh, after they swear you in foreign and domestic, who protect the con Constitution, they got all done. And they all, we all had a big smile. Now we're, now we're in the military. And then they said, you belong to us now. Zip! <laughs> Zip! all my clothes away, and then they started redressing me. That's what's happening here today. You're being redressed. It's a rehearsal for what's going to happen. You're getting the glory of the Lord upon your lives. Amen. And you're going to be caught up in His glory. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Praise God. Okay, verse 19. This is, uh, oh, we just read 19. Verse 20. Very important. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You say, Pastor, I don't know all things. I don't know that Bible. Yes, you do. You have the possibility, you have the mind of Christ when you became a new creation. What I hear from the Scripture, again, is this. There's a pruning going on. And the pruning is the world that tries to snatch us away and take us further from Christ. Remember when Jesus was in the wilderness and the three temptations that he was presented with? Remember that? Say amen. Amen. Blink your eyes. All right. What did he say? How did he defeat the devil? He said, it is written. It is written. He was laying a foundation of how we deal with things in life. It is written. Um... But you have, it says you have, you're not going, if you're born again, you have an anointing. You have the Holy Spirit from the Holy One, and you know all things. You have, to be, you should be thankful, and you should be believing that all things are possible to your life. In verse 21, um, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. No lie. So again, here we go again. No. No. And truth. Unbelief will hinder his power in your life. Well, it works for Gary, but it won't work for, you, for me. God is not a respecter of persons. If you ask in Jesus' name and you believe and don't doubt, that which he has promised in his word will come your life. Now it may take a while. You may have to keep pressing in. I thought of this. This, this is a good brother. I, I have to share. When I told Janice, I said, well, I'm going to retire. I'm getting up there now. And I can almost hear her saying, oh God, you answered my prayer. <laughs> I have all these things I've been wanting to get done that he would not look at. And I tell her, no, no, no. Don't mess with my nap time <laughs> and my thoughts. <laughs> oh, we have some fellowship at home, don't we, Jim? Loud. Loud. <laughs> <Love. laughs> well, you come by and you see the windows going like this. <laughs> that this morning, she, made, she put in a beautiful <coughs> line of flowers, and there's some bricks there she's been talking about. She says, I, I have something I want to get done. And I'm thinking, I hope it doesn't involve me. She said, no, this doesn't involve you. It involves me. <laughs> she wants to take all the bricks out. I said, no. Let the next guy take them out. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. All right. Praise God. I mean, we have a wonderful time in our home. And we had to bring a dog, a dog in, Zoe, who said they, they said he was going to be 35 pounds. He's up to 80. And she said, quit feeding the cooking store. I said, you quit feeding him. She'll lose weight. All right. Because of time factor, you need to read this all the way through. So I'm 
only whetting your appetite. Uh, 22. Who is a liar but he who denies Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist. Who denies the Father and the Son? Denies the Holy Spirit and the Word. Embrace what the Bible says. You may not understand it right now, but the answers will come as you keep pursuing the Lord. Amen? Amen. Seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Make it a motivation in your life to start your day with prayer or thanksgiving. You can pray throughout the day. Just keep offering up praise to God, praying in your understanding and in the Spirit. And you will, God will be uh, uh, <coughs> hearing you and answering you. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father. All right, we're going to... We're going to stop there this morning. And uh, uh, whoever denies means we need to uh, speak the truth. The Son does not have the Father either. And he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So words to ponder this week is knowing, abiding, and truth. Jesus said the truth will set you free. The more you have in you, the truth is keep your conscience. That's the first delivery of God's presence is to your conscience. Before you got saved, you would override your conscience. I know you never did this, but I did. Well, God created me this way. I can't help it. Everyone does it. No, everyone doesn't do it. You do the right thing because you know the Father is watching over you. You're one of His children. Amen? Amen? And be willing upon anyone that comes to your, your doorway, if they want to talk about Jesus and, and you have answers, and if you, you, they say, well, can you just tell me what the Bible says? No, let me get the Bible and let's open it up. Let me read it to you because I want to tell you, this book is a lie. This book will attach itself to you when you read it in faith you trust that God's Word it will transform your life. It will transform whoever listens to you. In uh, Hebrews 11, 6, it says, without faith, that was another key word, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. Do you believe that He is? Yes. Can you raise your hand? There you go. You're all Amen. Up. And that, now listen, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, chapter 11 is a, a, an overview of the Hall of Fame of all those who waited for the promise. We have received the promise in Jesus Christ. And if the music department would come